Welcome back to Mastering Next.js. In this final module, we're going to be talking about exporting and deployment. Finally, getting your site out there into the wild. We're going to talk about the different ways that you can export static pre rendering, use, exporting serverless functions, a couple different platforms that you can deploy on, my preferred one, which is Zite Now and Netlify, and then some configuration settings for now that will help you customize how you deploy your applications. So first I wanna talk about the two different deployment solutions that we have. The first one is Now, made by Zite, who makes Next.js. Now, Now is probably the easiest developer experience for deploying applications that I've ever used. It simplifies the process. It allows you to deploy applications with zero config if you want. So it will intelligently recognize I'm using a Next app, vanilla React app, Gatsby, any sort of framework or language, and it will understand how to deploy that and access it. The really cool thing is you can use it directly from the command line just by typing now after you've installed it. And another crazy thing is you can actually buy domain names directly from the command line and then assign them to projects. So really, really easy. And it integrates with GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, and um, directly works into the pull request flow. I'm gonna show an example of, of what that looks like here in a second, but I would highly recommend deploying your Next.js applications with now and checking out what you can do with this approach. Another deployment option is through Netlify. Netlify is also really great. I've had a lot of good experiences using them before I switched over to now. Um, ultimately, I felt the experience was a little better with now, which is why I'm, I'm staying there, but would still highly recommend Netlify um, their interface is very solid. They've got good pricing options for when you want to scale up beyond free tier. And I actually like their Netlify analytics a lot as well too. I think that's something that's coming to now in the future. So I'm holding out for that now. Um, so we have now or Netlify. There's a couple different ways you can deploy. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to use now for this course and we have Next.js applications and there's a few different ways that you can turn your code into an deployed option. So we talked about static pre-rendering a little bit before, and I just want to reiterate what that is. So when you do not use get initial props in a Next.js application, you are now able to render the output of your application to a static site. And this is going to overall increase the, the experience for your users because it's going to be a faster page load time. So when you're actually building, Next gives this helpful command that shows which routes are statically generated, which are from the server, and then which you know are API routes. And then there's some upcoming features too for using um, some experimental features for server props and static paths that it also touches on here. But ideally you want to statically render as many pages as you can, and then use the server for API routes or pages that use Get initial props. Another option for deployment that's not just building your application to the .next folder is using next export. And this exports to a out folder and this renders uh, completely static HTML that can run standalone without a Node.js server. Now, you might be wondering when am I going to use this? Uh, a real world example of where I've used this at work is we have a monolithic .NET application that we have no plans of rewriting, but we're slowly just maintaining and replacing with new features. And we needed to get a site out very quickly, but didn't want to do it inside of .NET. So we made a very small Next.js application. We export it out to the static HTML. And then we basically just copied over the output into this application and we were able to ship it and get it done much faster working with React, working with our component libraries, instead of building something inside of .NET and having to hand style all that. So that's when you might want to use the static export, but more often than not, I would say you're probably going to be fine with next build uh, because not only does it you know, output your static files, your static pre-rendering, it also um, gives you the ability to do API routes, uh, which I think is really big and allows you to kind of augment your next app and provide that server functionality. So 
I would lean towards using next build, especially if you're using now because it's able to pick that up and deploy your API routes as well. So for mastering Next.js, uh, this site is deployed through now. And if I head over to my Zite dashboard, uh, after I've already logged in, you'll see I have a few different projects. And I go to Next.js, it shows what deployment is in prod, I can view logs, serverless functions, what domains I have attached, and then you can see all the different deployments down here that I have. So if I wanted to make a change to my site and see that through all the way to prod, what I can do is go back over to a code and let's say, instead of coming soon, now we're going to say available now. So we're gonna update this hero and let's say I already made a branch called deployment example. I'll commit this code push it up to GitHub. Let's jump over to my repo here. Wait for this to finish. I'll refresh. And you'll see deployment example I just pushed to. So let's make a pull request here. I'm gonna update the hero coming soon to available now. Create a pull request. Wait for it. Come on internet, there we go. And now you'll see I have the now for GitHub integration. Now this is really cool. It deploys your app on every single PR. So I made a new PR, it gets auto deployed and it gets deployed to a unique URL for this branch. So I can view my changes in flight before it goes into prod and updates my website. Plus, I'm also running um, some linting and testing and all that gets to happen on my PR before it ever makes it into master and makes its way out to prod. So if I refresh, let's see, this is getting deployed. We're going to fast forward to deployment now. Okay, so it's been deployed. I see my CI failed because I need to update my node version. Ignore that. Uh, we have a link to inspector deployment and then we also have a preview of the deployed code. So if I click on preview, you'll see my new live site with its own unique URL and you'll see that the hero has been changed to available now. Now this makes it so incredibly helpful to test in-flight changes, share this URL with other people on your team uh, or stakeholders so they can review this feedback, review landing pages changes or whatever it may be before it actually makes its way into prod. So I would highly recommend this workflow um, you can even view logs as they come in real time for this specific deployment. Uh, it's, it's really, really helpful. Now, you can do zero config deployment with now, but you can also override and specify specific properties of how you want your code deployed using a now JSON file. So for mastering Next.js, uh, I'm on now 2.0. You can admit this, but uh, version 1.0 is no longer supported. So I'm, well, it's still supported, but it's not recommended, I should say. I define the name of the application, uh, some aliases for what I want to deploy to, so both Master Next.js and the www.version. They actually have baked this directly into the UI now, so when I go to domains, uh, I can put in all of the prod domains in here and all the different um, subdomains, which is really nice. So you can, you don't even have to do this what I want to build the code with, and then here's the part you might use, which is routes. So I'm saying that I want all of my code to be cached because when I deploy new code, it's going to have a new unique hash for that JS or potentially new assets. And when that happens, then when you load that page, I want those new static assets to be cached again too. So you can do some custom things here. Another example I want to show that I use on my blog is using uh, environments variables, environmental variables, and then also uh, redirects. So I have a few different things going on in this blog. I have uh, communication with Firebase and I have communication with MailChimp and I don't want to expose these secrets on the client side. So I use now's CLI, CLI to upload these secrets so that I can reference them in my application and it makes them available on process.emv so that I can use these in my application. So there's a bunch of docs on this on Now's website if you need to do this, but just wanted to let you know that that's an option. And then finally, 
Um, you can redirect if you change, you know, routes of some of your assets. I renamed my resume, so I threw a 301 so that any, you know, existing links wouldn't 404 when they tried to reference my new resume. So there's a lot you can do with now. It's not limited to just next. Uh, you can do a bunch of different languages, a bunch of different frameworks. Really, it's the best approach I've found for getting projects out there quickly. And I would highly recommend that you try it. So that's it. It's very easy to deploy code. You have a number of different um, configuration options for how you want to do it. But we've talked about the different ways to deploy, a couple different providers, why I like to use now. And that wraps it up. That's the final module. Thank you so much for watching all these modules, supporting me, supporting Mastering Next.js. Uh, please send me any feedback you have, any questions you have. I'd be absolutely thrilled to answer any questions you have. Um, just let me know and hopefully you have enjoyed this content, you've learned something new and you can take this knowledge, apply it to your job, to your personal projects and really build some amazing Next.js applications. So thank you again and cheers.